Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dean here and Access Consciousness. They do amazing healing work out into the world. So if you'd like to become a facilitator or take their courses anywhere, you can go to Dr. Dean here, H E E R.com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. And I'm Debbie Dashinger. I teach business owners, entrepreneurs, healers, coaches, and speakers how to write a highly engaging book. And then I've got a company that takes authors' books to a guaranteed international best-selling status. And the third leg of my visibility hub is the ultimate visibility formula, where I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcast and get massive results, a great ROI for your time well spent. If you would like my free gift to you, which is how to be interviewed and all the pieces to put together, go to debbie-inger.com slash message, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash message message, my gift to you. And this show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards, as well as a Webby Award. We are ranked in the top best podcasts in all of self-improvement and Apple Podcasts, as well as a trending top podcast. I love seeing the countries every week. This week was Belarus, Uruguay, and St. Lucia. So I honor everybody from around the world who tunes in, who really has a heart for this kind of conversation, the number one transformation conversation. Today, I've got somebody new coming on. I'm very excited to get to know and to introduce you to. And we're going to be talking about rippling waves, a spiritual journey through the heart of the universe. My guest is Anthony Teresi, Teresi who is a well, who's a well-known, renowned clairvoyant, master astrologer, psychic visionary, sound healer, and empath, highly respected for his compassion and integrity. And today we are going to travel with Anthony as he reveals the infinite bliss and wonder of the oneness that awaits us in the transcendent dimensions where our pure consciousness resides. Just reading this has so much beautiful energy, I have to say. These words are really gorgeous. So again, where our pure consciousness resides and ultimately returns to the origin from which all love flows. He is a multi-dimensional traveler working with the highest intuitive, psychic, and visionary forces. Anthony fuses his natural gifts with the intellect and wisdom born of many lifetimes of experience to create a special language that has inspired countless souls as they gain an understanding of the unseen forces that shape and transform all of our lives. If you would like to go more and find out more and perhaps even work with him, go to his website. It's Anthony, T-E-R-E-S-I. Dot com. And Anthony, I welcome you to Dare to Dream. It's great to have you. Wonderful to be here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, coming on and meeting you and talking to you. And I botched your name. Would you tell us the proper way to say your last name? You got it. Teresi. It is Teresi. It's Anthony mm-hmm. Teresi from the neighborhood. <laughs> you should know that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I love your name. I may have to say your heart few times during the show. So really, truly, your bio had energy to it, right? It's, for me, infused with energy. Those words were so expansive. So first of all, thank you that you even do that. And second of all, I'm fascinated that the word is used traveler, that you literally travel. Can I ask you, what does that mean? Traveling in this context is a a way to describe moving out of our everyday consciousness uh, into new dimensions where we can revel uh, and be uh, inspired by what we see and those uh, other types of experiences that we have, including meeting terrestrial and uh, Mm -hmm. celestial beings uh, and being in a position to uh, go uh, through our heart uh, into these uh, uh, states of being. Uh, Travel does, in this context, does not necessarily mean geographically going from here to there. 
it's a, it's a travel upward and inward as far as uh, vibrational frequency. And the uh, vehicle or the, uh, yeah, the vehicle that we're driving on is pure love. Mm. So Anthony, when you talk about what it's like, share a little bit what it's like to leave your body and the everyday world behind and allow your consciousness to visit where our souls originate. What is that like? It's really the most uh, enlightening, fantastic experience that we can have. Uh, uh, even, even more than being able to travel into dimensions, one of the, if not the greatest experience. Um, let me back up a second. When, when you look in the mirror, anyone, not you, but anyone, we think we see ourselves, but we don't. We see what is really uh, our interpretation of this reflection of ourselves. Well, when we truly see ourselves, it's when we turn that perspective around and look within and we see the light uh, that is emanating from us and that uh, really is coming from our heart. We connect with the force that breathes our breath and beats our heart. And that's when we're able to really become one with ourselves. When that happens, uh, that is the most, uh, I want to use the word explosive, but it's more effusive than, than, uh, than anything. And it's as if it, it, uh, it just uh, permeates all existence around you from that standpoint. So the first part of any journey in these uh, kinds of uh, contexts is first going within uh, and discovering the oneness uh, and the fantastic being that you are, that will become your, your vehicle uh, for uh, further expression. So anyone can do this. And is this something you can guide people to do? I'd like to think so. <laughs> but <laughs> um, it, it depends. If a person and I, I do this with my clients, uh, but that doesn't always work. Uh, in order to do what I'm outlining here, a person uh, needs to be able to see that the mental process is a block to what we're talking about here. If we allow mental chatter to enter the picture uh, or look for proof out there in the world that, we're, that this is happening, it's not going to happen. But if you're willing to quiet your mind, and if you're willing to put yourself in a position to uh, uh, have faith that, uh, you know, that there is an animating force, your soul, your spirit, whatever you want to call it, and that you can connect to it, then yes, I can definitely help people. But uh, the ultimate journey is, uh, you know, is uh, to, uh, an individual one, a person, I mean, I can, I can, lead a person to, uh, you know, say, okay, do this, go here, and this will happen to you, whether they do that or not, or whether they are able to uh, do the, the sustaining work that it takes to get there, then we don't know. It depends on the person. Mm. Your new book, Rippling Waves, A Spiritual Journey Through the Heart of the Universe, you write that we can awaken to the deepest truth of who we are. Can you offer Anthony some insight? How can we have a visceral experience of the real deep truth of who we are? It, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's the most beautiful experience that we can have, but it's one of the most elusive mm -hmm. because we are trained uh, at birth, from birth, unfortunately, to interpret everything that's happening out there in the world as our reality. But uh, I can sum it up in, in one uh, saying uh, by a 14th century mystic, uh, when his followers came to him and asked him, Master, can you please direct us to where enlightenment is, to where uh, our heart's desire is, where true spirituality is, we're looking for that place to go. And he just smiled at them and said, what you're looking for is what is looking. So what we're looking 
uh, at is that very identity that we seek. And it seems like a dual, a dual kind of uh, energy, but it's not. Uh, when you are able to, and, and by the way, um, <laughs> I would love to be able to tell you that this all happened over a weekend in, in uh, you know, in, in Hawaii and uh, uh, all of a sudden, you know, this was going on. But the, these experiences are the result of a lifetime uh, that I put into story form. Uh, many of the abilities that I uh, attained were attained through being a musician uh, and if, for, for many years uh, mastering that art. And it took a couple of decades uh, to get to the point to where I had sharpened my intuitive abilities to be able to discover, uh, you know, many of the uh, examples I give in my book. Uh, but um, I can attest to the fact that it's there. I know that I've had my own experiences and uh, I have been able to guide uh, meditations uh, and I had great results with that. Your book talks about a planetary renaissance spiritually and with harmony. And I think personally that because of the 15 months we've just gone through of the lockdown and so forth, that Reset uh, is imminent, right? I mean, it's not just, I think for the first time, it's a possibility greater than anything we know. And I think it took shutting down humanity globally for us to really have access to that. So what is, what do you maintain in all that? Can we expand? Can we transform? Can we ascend to this profound self-love and other compassionate love right now in this lifetime? What is it going to take for us to really make that shift? Well, that's a wonderful point. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, with the last 15 months of the pandemic, the economic uh, uh, stuff that we're going through, for the first time, really we are challenged for, in, in our lifetime for the first time we are challenged as a people as a as a global uh we're looking for global solutions because if if we cure the united states but we don't cure canada then we're just going to continue to to struggle with this so long story short the real problem exists in the uh concept of national nationality. Uh, we've drawn all these uh, imaginary lines on the planet that separate people into categories when in fact, we're really all one species. And this pandemic has shown that it doesn't care if you're Italian, if you're German, if you're Australian, it's coming, it's coming for you. Uh, and that has caused us to put together resources on a global level, uh, to uh, not completely yet, but these are the kinds of things that it's going to take for us to understand that all the human life, all life period has value. And as we look toward the solution uh, of, this, of this, this entire, uh, and I don't think we're done yet, but uh, as, as we look for the solution of it, we are going to find that it does not exist unless we put it all together in one package, unless we find some kind of way to work together as a people. If we do this, what we will find is that these perceived differences that we've been indoctrinated into believing that uh, Russians are one thing and Canadians are this and all that, it's all really just propaganda, quite frankly, because we're all human beings. We all want the same things. We all want love. We want affection. Uh, we want a, a, an abundant lifestyle. And the technology now exists for us to achieve that. Once that happens, once the uh, human race becomes just that, the human race, then we put ourselves in a position to create abundance for all. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really what, what this whole last uh, 15 months has, uh, has uh, brought out in stark relief uh, as far as the, the necessity to treat this as a global issue. When you say, Anthony, you don't think we're done, 
Are you speaking from a psychic perspective? Is there something that you have intuited or seen about this? Yeah, I think that uh, I don't think we're done because we have not put together as yet the proper uh, effective global response as yet. We still have this uh, these disbelievers that, that there's no such thing uh, as what's going on. We have political factions that are uh, rooted in, in my opinion, in, rooted in the Stone Age uh, in terms of uh, you know their um, acceptance of the fact that we have this global. We have isol isolation philosophies uh, that are keeping us from healing. So all of these things are going to be coming into stark uh, relief over the next nine to 12 months. And I think that by the end of that period of time, we will uh, be gone uh, from uh, the uh, state of mind that we have now and at least moving toward a uh, global a unity. I I'd like to put it into another perspective. Let's suppose just for the sake of our conversation, that you're Captain Picard and you're, uh, <laughs> you're I'll take orbiting. It, I'll take it. Yeah, okay. You're <laughs> orbiting the planet and you're looking down, and you're going, wow, there's seven billion inhabitants down there. And they look pretty intelligent. Uh, hmm. Who should we contact? What's the answer to that question? If you had to contact a civilization on our planet that represented our planet, who would that be? Personally, if it was me up in that starship, it depends on what my needs were. What was I hoping to accomplish by virtue of contacting a people? And then mm -hmm. I think it would become pretty clear, but hopefully the most open, open-minded, accessible people willing to engage in communication and um, receiving as well back and forth. Well, I, I would agree. But however, I think that uh, realistically speaking, until a planet becomes unified and until uh, there is a governing body that speaks for everyone, then there's no one to contact. Because uh, while there are many people who qualify in, in terms of what you just described, there are many people who, if the enterprise landed on the lawn of the White House, they still would not believe it. You know? <laughs> no, it's so true. <laughs> and it has. It's landed in many places. Oh. So it's it's kind of crazy, but uh, God bless my, 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 my point being is that I, I think to your to your point that I believe that the pandemic has has lent itself to uh, this uh, I, uh, explosion of this uh, conflict of isolationism. We are having to move away from that. Uh, we cure one part of the world, India explodes. We cure India, uh, China explodes. We cure China, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we have to take the global approach and which I hear now through the news uh, that we are now, our country is now sending out millions upon millions of free doses to these countries and that's right. that that's that's the plan i mean we, we've got to heal everyone and uh someone has to take the lead and it uh, seems to be us yeah yeah we've definitely stepped into that role absolutely so very interesting um i guess yeah this is where i want to go because i'm so curious because of something you said earlier when you talk about ascending from higher dimensions into the next, can you share some specific sites, like literally what you've seen or experienced in these dimensional places you've been to? Sure, absolutely. In fact, uh, I go through five general states of consciousness in my book, uh, transformational, transcendent, cosmic, divine, and then universal unity, which is somewhat similar to what we were just discussing. But in the transformational state, that's where you come to understand that you are a being of the realm. This is where you come to understand that you uh, uh, feel this uh, identity within yourself 
you feel that you have made that journey within and your experiences have brought you to the point to where you transform uh, the outer uh, reality into the inner reality. Mm -hmm. It's a very strange thing that happens, not strange, but wonderful thing that happens at that point is when you achieve a degree of enlightenment as an individual, the first thing you want to do is you want to share it with everyone. You want everyone to know about this. Uh, and that's the, the, one of the most beautiful things uh, that I experienced uh, was uh, when, when that happened to me. And again, I write about that in the first chapter. Uh, I uh, had an experience where I met uh, the celestial masters and was standing uh, at that uh, timeless moment between past and present. Uh, I was shown my past lifetimes and uh, the, the various things that I did. I was shown future possibilities that existed in terms of myself and humanity. And I was given a choice. I could basically continue to develop on my own as an individual, or I could go into the world and try to put myself in a position to speak the word. And of course, I chose the latter. Uh, in doing so, that freed me up to expand into other realms. Again, I, I want to make sure that I'm clear that this did not happen uh, in the way that I presented in my book in a linear fashion. Uh, you know, uh, often you, you develop uh, simultaneously a little bit here, a little bit there, but you, you create sort of a moving front. In either case, uh, in the next chapter, Transcendence, I write about a city that I visited. I uh, named it uh, Trasara, uh, and it is a city uh, in a completely different dimension that exists in a unified state of spirit. And it, it has the daily routines that uh, it, its inhabitants go through, <clears throat> uh, and it has structures and precepts and concepts, but the main thing is, is that everyone lives according to the uh, universal plan of uh, helping everyone uh, in their society create a higher spiritual reality. And all activity is geared toward that. This is not to say that there isn't fun and love and romance and all the things, but at a, at a much uh, higher level, and uh, in Trasara, for example, the beings there are not so limited as we are with these physical uh, uh, heavy bodies that we have. They are able to move around <clears throat> in the light of spirit. And because of that, they are able to accomplish tremendous things. I outlined some of the marvels there. Uh, in, in that section, uh, I also outlined what I uh, come to call later, what we need is a spiritual renaissance. And, in, and at that level, uh, I try to demonstrate as clearly as possible the uh, experiences of art, philosophy, thought, uh, the uh, individuals who are the shapers of the future of this philosophy, of, this, uh, of these beings. And uh, it's, it's amazing what you can see, for example, when you see celestial painters creating these huge canvases, miles uh, in, in width and size, and then you can see the vibrations of the canvases coming up off the canvas and, and almost dancing in front of your eyes. Uh, it's, it's astonishing. Uh, and it's like so, in, uh, invigorating that you, it's when you come away from that for a moment, it's like, I mean, often I would have these experiences and I couldn't sleep for two or three days. I mean, afterwards, it was like uh, amazing. So is Trisara, uh, is it another planet? Is it another version of earth? Is it another dimension altogether? It's another dimension altogether. Uh, however, uh, I have to give away the ending of my book if I tell you that. 
<laughs> you give half okay. of it away. <laughs> okay. It's, still worth uh, reading. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I don't. I don't mind it because it's uh, it's a thinly veiled disguise anyway. Uh, it represents really the future of our our society in an expanded state. Uh, the whole book uh, uh, moves toward that very fact that at some particular point, our evolution, in spite of the craziness that's going on right now, uh, I introduced a concept called the law of emergence, not the law of attraction, the law of emergence, uh, which is simply stated the fact that a acorn has within it the entire uh, blueprint for the oak tree, we have within us the entire bl uh, blueprint for expanded uh, transcendent beings. That's wonderful. Oh. So uh, in, this, in the third chapter, Cosmic Consciousness, we take a step back. Instead of focusing on uh, the future uh, and what uh, is existing as a future simultaneously, quite frankly, we take a step back and we go within and I try to do my best to make uh, reference to the things that hold us back and the parts of our personality that we have to disengage from so that we are able to move closer into and, and, and uh, put ourselves at one with the uh, center of light that, that emanates from us. Can you give an uh, example of that? Like, is there something that you yourself have had to release and surrender that was not serving you? <laughs> so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I, uh, for many years, uh, as a metaphysician and a musician and all of the above, for many years, I um, sought the answer of the universe. I, I wanted very much to understand the various workings of how the universe went together. And so consequently, my, my perspective was focused on the out there uh, and from that standpoint. Uh, as I became more and more uh, rooted in intuition and my psychic ability, uh, I found that that was emanating from a completely different place. That was not coming from the outside world. Uh, I was able to bypass the mental process and tap into consciousness. But I would ask myself, well, what is doing that? Who, who in me and what in me is able to do that? And so I began reversing my investigations, if you will, and uh, uh, putting through myself through meditation uh, and trying my best to uh, uh, discover who I was as a, as a light, as a spiritual being. As a musician, I was able to accomplish this to a great degree because as a musician, for example, when you master your instrument, and many, many musicians and many actors will say this, so it isn't just me, but when you get to a point to where you have mastered the art of performance, for example, uh, one of the statements that you'll hear often, it's, it's as if I was standing next to myself, watching myself perform. Oh, I understand uh, this so well. I grew up having the feeling, I don't anymore, of being a camera outside of myself. I was so not present. I was so dissociated. I know exactly what you're talking about. Is that similar to what you're saying? Exactly. Uh, and uh, when you see that, you are presented with two different perspectives. You are presented with, presented with the perspective of the performer, but who is the looker? Who is, who is watching that? And it's through this yeah. in, engagement of uh, uh, perception that you begin to realize you know, who is looking, who, who is who is the individual life spark that is co-creating with the divinity that exists all around us. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, uh, it's as if a door opens, literally as if a door opens and you are able to reverse the process entirely. Instead of searching for meaning out into the world, you all of a sudden are coming from the inside out 
everything in the world has meaning for you as an individual, as a, as a spiritual being. And that is what expands your light. This light is what you see around people. It's the aura, it's the, it's the light that exists uh, uh, in, in many instances. Uh, another quick example of this is that uh, if anyone out there in your uh, show has had NDEs, near-death experiences, they also will have experienced this as well. The individual part of them that pops out for that moment, that's, their, that, that's what we're making reference to here. That's what uh, uh, exists beyond the body. And so I, it's hard to explain. And, I, and I, I found myself really at odds in writing this book because so much of what I wrote had to be written almost like metaphorically because there just is not a language to put, uh, to, uh, put these things into intelligible form for someone to read. Yeah, well, well described. And I, I understand what you're talking about. And I appreciate the idea that at some point there is a surrender to that experience. So instead you can merge, come back to the one. Uh, it's very powerful, like really powerful, that level of uh, presence and beingness. Uh, and also the idea for people who have, and gosh, I know so many who have had near-death experiences that what gets left behind is not the light, is not the soul, it's something else altogether. And what about you? What about your story, Anthony? I mean, I, I read that you're a fourth generation intuitive, that you had unexplained visions as a child, a lot of really powerful spiritual activity for you. Were you always like this? Were you always very accepting or was it a journey for you to get here? What was your journey? Wow, <laughs> great question. Uh, yes, uh, growing up as a uh, small child, I grew up in a household of um, uh, individuals. My mother, my grandmother, my great grandmother uh, all were psychic uh, and all had their own degree of abilities from that standpoint. Uh, and so often, uh, classic example I like to use is that I would tell my mother the phone was going to ring and my aunt was going to call. And 10 minutes later, the phone would ring, it would be my aunt. Everybody laughed. And you know, I was really, I, I was really nurtured and well accepted in that regard. And my skills and gifts were brought along. I, I was led to feel that this is natural, that we all have this. Conversely, my dad, who was not really psychic, but was a avid a UFO uh, uh, follower and uh, taught me as a young child, eight, nine, 10 years old of the, the fact that there are, the universe is teeming with life and other planets and, uh, uh, and you know, the uh, value of that between those two forces uh, put me in a position to accept these things completely and totally without any real question, because after all, uh, you know, they, they were ingrained in me from childhood. Um, and another example my dad used to give me that I still use constantly is that the way that frequency and dimensions exist uh, can be put into an example. If you had two really strong flashlights, one much more powerful than the other, and you turn them on and you cross the beams, where they intersect, both lights would exist simultaneously, but yet would be different uh, in, in their context and their luminosity. And that's what happens with dimensions. They exist simultaneously, just one upon one, upon one is higher as far as the vibrational frequency. And so even as you and I are sitting here, uh, on your wonderful show, there are activities occurring around us with, that we can't see, but are happening in the same space that we're sitting in. That's an amazing explanation. It's very powerful. Thank you. So, you know, you have a unique experience. I rarely hear that on this show. Almost to a person, people who turn out to have these incredible gifts 
in the psychic and intuitive and visionary realm had an often very difficult childhood around it, not accepted, and had to, at some point, pretend none of it existed, disconnect from it until usually something traumatic happened that reinvigorated it and they came to accept it, uh, their calling, so to speak. So what did you do with your spiritual nature? Was it completely out there or did something happen to you, even with this very nurturing upbringing that really brought it out and allowed it to uh, thrive? Oh, I had, again, I'm so, uh, it's, a, it's a bittersweet uh, story, but I'll tell it. Uh, I, I had a brother uh, who was only 14 months apart. Um, and this goes back a number of years. And uh, he uh, was flying to uh, Mexico, had his own plane, um, and was uh, going to be landing in Acapulco. And uh, he was on the radar, uh, and all of a sudden he wasn't. Uh, and uh, the uh, time went by, um, three weeks, a month, we didn't hear from him, um, and contacted uh, the uh, airport there. They told us that they had lost him on the radar, and we had, hadn't had any word, we being my family. So I went to Mexico uh, with the full intention of finding out what was going to, what had happened one way or the other, uh, what, you know, if, if he was had crashed or if he was still alive or whatever. Uh, I was there almost a little over a month. Um, and in that time, uh, I was driven. I, I uh, hired guides. I went into the jungle. I covered every path, every road, every village. Uh, I talked to whoever we could talk to. Again, uh, with uh, church representatives, with uh, 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 local uh, individuals who spoke the language uh, you know, completely clearly. And at the end of that time, uh, after having covered the entire uh, uh, area, uh, and he was lost somewhere uh, between Ixtapa and Acapulco. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows where that is, but that's uh, kind of the area we're talking about. Up in the hills up there, it's very much a, a wild uh, uh, area. In either case, uh, I'm sitting there in my hotel room at the end of all this, completely frustrated. I, I didn't know what to do. I had to leave the next day to go back and talk, uh, talk to my family and tell them that I had found nothing. Uh, and uh, with the, the question marks remained. In that moment, uh, the room began to, uh, to become brighter uh, and to the point to where the light uh, in the room was as if it was daylight. This was about midnight. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, there was a burst of light. Uh, it was as if a veil parted, literally, that I had never seen before. Uh, and there was my brother. Uh, he, was, he was not manifesting in his physical form in my room, but it was him nonetheless in his light body. And I was... Uh, blown away. I was shocked. Uh, it's been said the highest human emotion is both laughing and crying at the same time. This is what I was doing. Tears were rolling down my face. And he told me that his plane had crashed and that he didn't make it. Uh, and, but he seemed excited and thrilled about where what was happening. He was moving on. And he had come to tell me that uh, you know, to say goodbye to everyone and to uh, put uh, me in a position to let everyone know that uh, he loved them with all his heart. And then the light receded and he was gone. And I was left there shaking, but so grateful to have had this experience where I actually saw that death is an illusion. And my brother had definitely appeared to me. And I've been challenged with this so many times uh, in terms of whether people believe it or not. And it makes no difference to me. I know what that experience was uh, because my brother and I were so close. I know for sure that this happened. Footnote, uh, after going back and telling my family, uh, even, even my family was a little skeptical about what had happened. 
Uh, so it remained a, a question mark for many, uh, for a long time. About five years later, we did receive a communication from the Mexican government that his plane had been found. It had been found at the 8,500 foot level on the side of a mountain under a bunch of brush and trees that I never would have been able to find. It had been found by hikers quite accidentally. So it became evident to me that, from, that uh, I had been called to Mexico for the search, but for a greater experience. And from that point forward, my life changed radically going forward. Do you think it changed radically because your brother in some fashion was now spiritually with you, maybe helping you? Or do you think because of the experience of seeing him in his light body and it's uh, uh, it, words I can tell cannot even suffice how incredible that must have been for you. What a gift he gave you at a time where you were so frustrated with no answers. And so was it that that was like that flipped the switch and everything changed? Or is it, do you think also this relationship may be ongoing, even though it's not in an earthly way? No, I think it was, it was uh, definitely the, the sudden reality of this incredible shift in perception where the light emitted and emerged from where there was none before. Uh, and this discovery of uh, this, again, new reality of the soul moving on and the fact that there, there was, that death was not an actuality. Uh, not to mention not moving on, but as I said before, he seemed thrilled with, with, uh, with his uh, circumstance. And uh, uh, it, it, was, it was, again, the most beautiful, not, I mean, I've, had, I've been fortunate to have many beautiful experiences, but because of the shift in my perceptions, I was able to then look for these experiences. I was then able, as I grew and became more deft at uh, my own conscious and uh, uh, super conscious abilities, I was able to not be blown away by these experiences. I'd be able to accept them because of this experience that I had had. Mm. And along the way from there to here, have you had any shamanic experiences or psychedelic experiences that helped enhance your direction? I have. Uh, I uh, experimented with uh, all of the uh, psychedelics uh, early in life, um, uh, everything from uh, mushrooms to ayahuasca and all the above. Uh, I had to let it go because it was too... Uh, it wasn't really giving me what I wanted. It wasn't giving me the control to be able to pursue these things uh, and own them. It, it, and again, I write about this in my book. I mean, especially mushrooms. I mean, they would transport you to this incredibly wonderful place and you're seeing all this fantastic stuff. You don't know where you are. You don't know what it all means. It's, <laughs> wonder <laughs> it's wonderful. And then all of a sudden you wake up and you're back in your home and you're, you know, you've had this experience and like, you're scratching your head and you're going, what, what, what had happened? What, you know, so uh, I, 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 like I said, that, that certainly uh, in my adventure, uh, I would have been, I think I would have been, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't have been able to advance as quickly as I uh, did if I had not first tried that because they also mm -hmm. did open up these experiences as well, but it's because of, uh, of the radical uh, thrust into the universe and then, you know, this pull backward into your uh, original self. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted to be able to make this journey uh, willfully. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I want to explore a little bit this idea of you being such a great musician. I listened to some of the music on your website. I found it fascinating. And uh, you offer these sound healings and performances. I myself, um, I was a singer most of my life, professional singer and actress. And when I started this career, I let that go, 
perfect. It was exactly where I was supposed to be. I love what I do. And then during COVID, actually during a ceremony, it came back up oh, a year ago, six months, something like that. And I suddenly was like, wow, what happened to singing? So I started doing it again and it's been incredible. I mean, I can't even believe after 13 years that I still have the voice I do. I'm being very honest, like if it had gone away, it would have made more sense, you know, not using a muscle like that. But I know I'm in a lot of gratitude for having this really unexpected renaissance. What is it like for you coming up with the creations in your sound healing and in your performances? Well, it's wonderful. Uh, it, uh, it's another uh, vehicle, another tool, if you will. Uh, you start with inspiration, which is wordless, vision, uh, an idea, and then you translate that into vibrational frequency, which are notes on music, and then that turns out to be a creation. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the single most viable demonstration of the cosmic process. Uh, when you are singing, uh, and by the way, I'm not surprised that you didn't lose your voice uh, because I think that in many ways, uh, you, you're probably able to uh, demonstrate vocally now that uh, you know uh, these new levels of consciousness that you've acquired over the last 13 years. So that, that's marvelous. But uh, creating music, it is in the emulation of the of the act of creation of, of the universe and uh, the ability to do so again was another launch pad uh, for me uh, I played uh, professionally for uh, almost 30 years and in that time I became involved in sound healing which uh, was what I did when I realized that vibration moves people. And uh, it's my contention that the healers of the, of the future, the doctors of the future, will in fact be sound artists. Uh, mm. A person is suffering from heart uh, condition, for example, they will visit uh, a vibrational healer. Uh, that healer will uh, vibrate that heart back into its normal uh, vibration. And illness ultimately will wind up disappearing because everything is just a matter of being out of sync. If you're having illness, that illness is curable. And by the way, there's a video that shows that the three uh, Tibetan monks are chanting and they show this tumor of this woman uh, and they're chanting. And in 20 minutes, they are able to vibrationally reduce the tumor uh, of this woman to, to nothing. It's, it's astonishing. Uh, uh, we don't see it that much in this country, unfortunately, because uh, it's, there's no profit in healing. Uh, there's only profit in uh, uh, maintenance, you know. In either case, uh, music led to healing. Healing uh, led to the desire to want to make more of an impact on individuals. That led me to uh, pursue psychic realities as, as a uh, uh, profession. Took me a long time to gain my confidence in, in terms of dealing with other people. Uh, it took a, uh, probably close to 10 years before I was able to tune my abilities to where uh, I had enough, enough client uh, feedback uh, to let me know that what I was visualizing and what I was seeing intuitively was at reality as opposed to my imagination. I was very concerned about that. I was very concerned about the authenticity of entering that field because there's so much woo-woo, you know, in, in, in that regard. Uh, but I was happy to find that uh, uh, my intuition you know, works beautifully. And through music, I was able to be in a position to where I could, for example, start a reading the same way that I would begin a piece of music. And when the reading was over, I could uh, turn my intuition off because I really don't want to go into the market and know what everyone is thinking, you know? <laughs> yeah, that must be incredible. I think about that all the time because anytime you're out in public, it's got to be something. No less going to the Hollywood Bowl where you and I live, you know, where there's thousands upon thousands of people in one place. 
So the ability to be able to turn off and on, I'm sure, has helped you so much. Do you have a message for us, for the audience? Can I ask you to tap in? Uh, this would be a bit collective because many will be listening to this in replay. Some will be listening to this live. But if you could tap into the collective, do you have something that you might share with us that you think is of import for us to hear or know? Uh, I, I believe the time has come for the artists, the musicians, the creative individuals, the science philosophers, and all of the uh, organizations dedicated to unifying the planet to step forward, to begin creating a renaissance of thought, a renaissance of unity, a renaissance that's, that lifts us above the chatter and clatter of uh, the banging drama of the media and, the, and, and such. We are, we're one people. We will uh, strive uh, mightily uh, to create abundance for all if we put ourselves in a position to understand that we have been separated uh, by design. We have been separated because it's easier to control uh, the populations by, by design. If the people of our planet were to unite, there's really nothing we, we couldn't accomplish. Um, from an angelic standpoint, uh, I can say for sure that we are guided dramatically. Uh, individuals uh, who are making strides in the world today have tremendous angelic and celestial presence about them and are doing wonderful work in the world. We don't hear about them because there's no death and destruction. There's only love and acceptance. But I guarantee you, even as we speak, there are millions of individuals working in the very context of what I'm talking about. So I would uh, say, first, enter your own heart. Begin, begin the process of knowing yourself. Light your light so that it shines and, and beautifies the world around you. And when you do that, you are creating the planet and the, and the uh, energy that when connected with other individuals will form the network of love that covers our planet. Mm, thank you. Absolutely. Your father was a believer in UFOs and spoke with you very openly. Have you yourself had experiences with other planets, other beings and civilizations? I have. Uh, and again, the ending of my, of my book uh, uh, goes into that uh, in great detail. It may be surprising for some of us to accept but we are not the only species in the planet, in, in, the, in the universe. The universe is teeming with life. Um, and um, it's interesting to note that one of, the, uh, one of the types of consciousness that I've come across is the expansion of our own species well into the future. Many of the uh, so-called ETs are human beings that lived on this planet millions of years ago who have mastered time travel and who are returning at this particular point. And we're gonna see that along with uh, other uh, individuals uh, at, you know, uh, we're not that far away from being inducted into the celestial neighborhood, if you will. So when that happens, we're gonna see tremendous things occur. The celestial neighborhood. I'm I'm coming to to meet them. Meet and greet. <laughs> I'm telling you, we we uh we just went to Mount Shasta and we sat at the base of the mountain and it's a really spiritual place and there's a lot of UFO activity and we invited several nights we invited contact 
Um, we did definitely see something very interesting in the sky, inexplicable, uh, but no contact. And we have plans to go to Joshua Tree um, with some people and do something similar. So I am. Uh, Josh is amazing. Oh, I love it up there. Yeah, that will be the first of many trips. That was, it was a surprise how small it is. I didn't envision that, how tiny, but what a powerful place and what amazing people and energy. So that yeah. that Sh uh, Shasta is the uh, equivalent of the root chakra of our planet. Uh, there's an entire chakra system over the planet, and, Sh and Shasta is the root chakra uh, and is the only real chakra in the in the in North America. So that's why it has such power. Oh. That's incredible. The root chakra. Are there other root chakra uh, locations on the planet? Uh, there are other locations for sure. There's one of uh, the the, uh, uh, the chakras correspond to uh, geographic locations. The second chakra is at a place called the Isle Island of the Sun in uh, Bolivia. Uh, the third chakra is in uh, Uluru Katajuta in Australia. The fourth is in uh, Glastonbury in England. Uh, the fifth is in um, Indonesia. The sixth is uh, uh, the um, the four temples of Bali, and the seventh uh, is in, of course, uh, the Him the Himalayas uh, from that standpoint. So again, I, I have a video out regarding that called Earth Chakras. Uh, I invite you to look at it. Uh, it goes into detail regarding this very issue. On your website? Yes. AnthonyTeresi.com. It's T-E-R-E-S-I.com. This is Dare to Dream, Anthony. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Well, I'm really looking forward uh, to having this period pass. And I really want to get out, do a book tour, beginning doing, uh, beginning to do some keynote speaking. I, I really want to connect with people on a one-on-one one -on -one or a personal level from that standpoint. So I love Zoom and I, uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you as well. And you're fantastic. And I'd love to, I'd love to be able to sit down and talk with you, you know, kind of thing in a, in a real conversation. Because for me, uh, even though I'm able to, to uh, do readings across the world, uh, the greatest joy is interacting with, uh, with these kinds of concepts and putting myself in a position to be able to see the audience in front of me and to be able to uh, in, interact with that. I mean, that's, that's so elevating. It's so invigorating. I, can't, I just can't... Uh, in, in, uh, tell you how much I enjoy it enough. I'm with you. I get a lot of energy from people as well. Yeah, I'm excited for that. So people who are interested in you and would like to deep dive, get your book, anything you want to let them know and where can they find you? Well, you can find my book on Amazon, uh, Rippling Waves, uh, and uh, they can find me at my website. Uh, all of my contact information is on my website. Please, Feel free to call me. You don't, you don't have to worry about disturbing me. I always take my own calls. If I can't, I will call you back. Uh, everything, pricing, services, everything is on my website. I just had it updated, so <clears throat> it's easy, easy to read. <clears throat> and uh, I'm hoping that you'll be seeing me coming across the country or, or, or over the next uh, 12 months or so. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Anthony. It's really been a pleasure talking to you. I want to thank you, too. Uh, I want to thank you for having this show. I want to thank you for interviewing the people that you interview and getting the word out there. Uh, this is exactly what we need to, to help to facilitate this transformation. So kudos to you, my dear. And I really appreciate it so much. Mm, beautiful. I end today's show with this quote from Rodney A. Smith from Virginia Woolf in Lessons from the Dying. What is the meaning of life? The great revelation never did come. Instead, there were little daily miracles, illuminations, 
matches struck unexpectedly in the dark. Subscribe to this Dare to Dream podcast so you can hear this number one transformation conversation. My guest next week is Michelle Pascal, who created the Meditation for Daily Stress, a rare mix of spirituality and neuroscience. Michelle is the author of 20 books and before moving to the United States, called the Copan Monastery in the Himalayas home. Michelle is the disciple of a very famous theologian, psychologist, and he currently works closely with neuroscientists. He also has an unbelievable singing voice, and I hope we can get him to sing for us spontaneously. If you love the show and you enjoy what you're hearing, subscribe to the videos so you can see what we look like animated and all gorgeous. Go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H. I-N-G-E-R. Tell your friends about the show. And remember, don't just dare to dream. Dare to turn all your dreams into your reality.